Good morning. What are the good thoughts that God thinks toward us? One of the most famous texts in the Old Testament is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It's in our passage today. Let's read verses 10 through 14. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. So normally when we read this, we think about God's good plan toward us. You know, he personally loves us. He wants to to give us all the good things we need. He's a personal God. He's, he's looking at my life. He's looking at your life. And that's true. In its context, it's interesting, though, to also see uh, what God was saying through his servant Jeremiah. There's a 70-year time they're going to be in Babylon. So a lot of these people are going to go there and not come back. But God still has a good thought for them. So he's talking about the group, the group of captives. And he says, I, am, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Yes, to them, it seems like it's a total disaster. The nation's been wrecked. Babylon's come in, and here we are. Our, all of our things we've hoped for are all ruined. Here we are, captives in Babylon. God has abandoned us, but God hasn't abandoned them. And this is a message from God to show them, I have not abandoned you. In fact, look, again, he has thoughts of peace. And he told them, you know, to build houses, plant gardens, live your life there. Don't worry about it. I'm putting you in a new situation. It'll be good for you. You needed this. Wished you didn't need it, but you needed this. So that's what we have. And now notice what's going to happen. What are God's people going to do? They're going to call on him. They're going to pray to him. They're going to be found by him. Uh, they are going to turn back to him with their whole heart. Because in the captivity, they will be raised in a, in a different environment they will be sad for the bad things that got them there. And God is going to do a mighty thing once their hearts are repentant again. God can do a lot for you and I when our hearts are repentant. But when our hearts are, are closed, when our, our eyes are blinded by the things that we want to do, it never works out too well. God has a beautiful plan for your day, for your future, for your present, just as he did for them. Although in this case, they had to go into captivity. But God reassures them. I love you. I sent you here with a purpose. Under God's chastening, he's going to bring them back. Their descendants, their children are going to grow up and go back and be restored in Jerusalem. So, interesting pieces here. God is going to bring the people back. But first, they have to do some school there. They have to learn some lessons about trusting him. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we know you have thoughts of peace and not of evil toward us, thoughts to give us a future and a hope. We've looked at this text. We've been encouraged by this many times. It's interesting to see how it fits, Lord, into the overall picture for the kingdom of Judah and how there in their apostasy, still, Lord, you, you worked for them and you're going to deliver them. So bless, Lord, we pray. Help us to work with you. Help us to combine with you so that these things can happen in our life and your blessings can be given to us, the blessings you want to give us. We don't deserve them, but I think we'll be glad to receive them, Lord, at your hand. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So God has thoughts of peace and not of evil toward you and I. Let's live this day knowing that we have a good God. He's on our side. He loves us. He wants this to be a good day for you spiritually. And let's let it be that by cooperating with him. God be with you.